We welcome you to the New York City Half Marathon Expo. We welcome you to another edition of On the Run. I'm Rob Powers from WABC Channel 7 here in New York City. I will be your host as we get ready for tomorrow's running of the New York City Half Marathon. On today's edition of On the Run, we will get to know Janet Balkum just a little better. Her spirit just may inspire you. We'll also talk with Brian Steinauer, defying the odds to simply take a step. And now he's making strides. It's all coming up on the latest edition of On The Run. Race day approaches, and it won't be long now until runners from all over the world approach the start line for tomorrow's race. Come on in. Let's have some fun. Todd Williams, Carla Bruning, Kerry Tollefson. Todd, let's start with you. What do we look forward to tomorrow? I think all over the world is right. Twelve countries on the women's side are going to be represented, and you have nine women that are entered in sub-110. I'm looking forward to watching Kim Smith. Last year, she led from pretty much start to finish all the way to 13.09 and was passed in that last 100 to finish second. And I know she's here really fit, ready to run, and she's got the fastest time in the field of 107.11, so it's going to be fun to watch her. Here we go. Janet Balcom is my pick. She is from the U.S., and she's a current Olympian, and, you know, she has such a great story. It's going to be fun to watch her, but we can't forget about Carolyn Rotich. She won this race in 2011. She's coming off a PR from the fall marathon that she ran in Chicago. That girl's on fire as well, so it's going to be a fun day. Carla, quick thoughts? Well, this year it's really about so much more than a run, and there are some really incredible and inspirational everyday runners who really resonate with that. We have some fast facts for tomorrow's race. Some 15,000 runners ready to take to the streets of New York City. Runners from 49 states and 69 countries, a field that includes 19 Olympians, and proving that the NYC half is more than a run. 2,800 runners running for charity. And Carla, you spent some time with somebody who embodies, I guess, our theme more than a run. Absolutely. I had the really the privilege of spending an afternoon with Brian Steinhauer, a young man whose story will certainly inspire a lot of runners, and he is an incredible spirit, and it was really a pleasure to get to know him. So here is inspiration. Here is Brian Steinhauer. At 22 years old, Brian Steinhauer had his entire life ahead of him, but his story turned a tragic page when he was attacked by three men in a bar. So five years ago, you were a rapper. Tell me a little bit about your life before the accident. I'm about to start my life, about to graduate. Pretty much having a diploma in my hand already. Having the time of my life just partying away. Very excited about to be an accountant. Then I wake up in the hospital, can't move, can't talk. One of his assailants kicked him repeatedly in the head, leaving Steinhauer unconscious with severe brain damage. Steinhauer languished in a coma for three months. Three out of his four limbs were frozen. His arms were completely frozen. We didn't know if he was going to make a recovery at all. My family was very angry and upset. and had to sit there and watch me helplessly. He had a pillow up and a ball, and he was able to kick his leg at at the pillow when we said pillow and, and kick his leg at the ball when we said ball and that was the first time that we knew that he had any capacity for language. I asked doctors like will I walk? The only answer I got was we see no reason why not. That's not any kind of motivation to work. Steinhauer has spent the last five years relearning to walk, talk, and eventually taking and passing his CPA exam. He now works as an auditor for accounting firm KPMG. If you need a raw solution because I've been through too much training for a delusion. My friends, my family, my parents were there every day by my bedside. Without any of them, I wouldn't be here. So okay, I'll give it a try. First thing, learn how to transfer from a wheelchair to the bed. Really just get up and sit down. That by itself was a challenge at first. I was afraid of pain, who likes pain? But then I saw how much the pain was improving me. None of pain. Lo and behold, here I am preparing for the marathon. No walking, running the entire way. Steinhauer founded Minds Over Matter, a foundation for young adults with traumatic brain injuries. He used his training for the NYC half to raise money for the foundation through CrowdRise. People with brain injury, they need support. They need someone to love them. They need someone to show them that if they put their heart towards it, they can recover just like me. 
to discipline for reaction, to thought for fragmentation. But I'm ready for some meditation to rise above the struggles like levitation. Now this race is about nothing else but inspiration, sure. And we've got inspirational stories from sunup to sundown. But it's also about gathering the world's top runners and putting them in one race. And in this one race, we have some of the top female runners in the world ready to take to the streets of New York City tomorrow morning. Let's take a look at some of the top runners that we have coming to the race this year. Janet Baucom, Madia Perez, Caroline Rotich, Kim Smith, Valeria Stranio is here as well. Some of the top female runners in the world ready to go tomorrow, Todd. And I'd like to start right off with like a Kim Smith. I mean, Kim Smith, like I mentioned in the opening, that she was second last year. I think she's really hungry. She ran in the Olympic Games, so she's, you know, one of the many Olympians in the field. So got to look at her. And uh, Valeria Stranio, Italian record holder in the marathon, has the second fastest time in the field, 35 seconds behind Smith last year, or actually in a previous race of 107.46. And this is her New York City half debut. Caroline Rotich, she was the 2011 New York City half champ, so you got to look at, always got to look at past champions. Maddie Perez from Mexico, she's a national marathon record holder and as well as a 109.45 PR in the half. And Janet Balcom, I mean, she's dominated the road, road scene since she started. She's won the 15K, the 10 mile, the half marathon. And just last week down in Jacksonville, Florida, I got the opportunity to watch her dominate a great field in the national championships. So those are five of the top runners coming for tomorrow's race. If you had to handicap this, how strong is this field? I mean, again, it's just like the men's field. You know, the, the New York Roadrunners and, and Mary Wittenberg have done such a fantastic job just putting everyone together on the streets of New York. I mean, to me, it's the, it's the best field in the United States, if not uh, in the world, for the half marathon distance. Carrie, you agree? I definitely agree. You know, Kim Smith is obviously someone we have to watch. She's run the fastest half marathon on American soil. So if she's not a favorite, I don't know who is. But, you know, I also like Janet Baucom. I think she really is actually excited to race. She's a new American citizen, and mm -hmm. she loves wearing the USA across her chest. So, you know, it's going to be a fun day on Sunday as well. We'll get to the picks in just a second, Carla. Well, I definitely think that Kim Smith is a runner to watch. She has said that the half marathon is her favorite distance to race. She likes to get out there early out in front, so I think she's going to be leading the charge from the get-go. But you can't uh, rule out Valeria Stranio. She's got the second fastest time in, the, in this field, just 35 seconds behind, behind Kim Smith. It's her first time at the NYC half, so I think she'll be looking to make a real impact here today. And now is the time to lay the cards on the table, and we will get your picks. We will start with you, sir. I think Kim Smith. I mean, she's going to go out, the gun's going to go off, and you're going to see her go right to the front. And, you know, that's just the way she runs. So it's going to be up to the rest of the field to make a choice, probably within the first half mile. Am I going to go with Kim or am I going to settle for second place? Do you agree with him? I do. I mean, oh, not no. a lot of times. What is this time world coming to? <laughs> but you know what? Kim Smith, she's finished here second. We've said that over and over again. She wants to win. She doesn't have a spring marathon on the board, so she's, you know, fresh and feeling good. Uh, Janet Balcom, though, I think that girl, she's finished fifth here last year. She wants a win. She likes to win. I'm going to put my cards on her as well. Whose cards do you have? I have to go with Kim Smith as okay. well. You know, she has said that she wants to win this race. So I think she's going to get out there and try to do it. But Caroline Rotich, she's pulled an upset here at the NYC half before. She could do it again. We're taking, we're taking bids here right now. So right now we're, 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 all, we're all of – and earlier, earlier this week you had a chance to sit with Janet Balkum as well. You know, Janet, like I said, became a new, new citizen over here. And once she did, she became, she became U.S. champion over and over and over and over again and an Olympian. So she is just such a neat person. She has such a good heart, and she really likes to run fast. So it was an, a pleasure to, you know, be able to catch up with her and get to know her a little bit more. I think one thing we can all agree on is that Janet is turning heads <laughs> and dominating. Janet, you became an American in 2010, became an Olympian for the United States in 2012. Lots happened before then. Can you kind of fill us in on your, your growing up in Kenya and when you came over here? Yeah, I grew up in Kenya, moved here in 2000, went to college and graduated, married my best friend and, you know, just ran for fun for a while and I got better every year and only to find myself in the Olympic team. You've been winning like crazy over here in America. So talk about that. I mean, how it feels to actually be a U.S. Olympian, but now a U.S. champion over and over and over again. Just to do what you love, having fun. Running is just 
one of those things that can really pay off. You know, you gotta be patient and just trust whoever is leading you. What's your favorite part of the course and your favorite part about being here in New York City? Central Park is my favorite part for sure, you know. I know I'm gonna be half the way after I get out of Central Park and just then you come out and you run through Times Square, you can't even top that. Can you tell us your goal for the race on Sunday? My goal for Sunday is just to finish the race and know that I did the best I could and hopefully I can place higher than fifth and it will be just awesome if I can get another PR in New York. Well, we'll be excited to watch you race. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, without question, Janet is one of our top returning runners for this year's New York City Half Marathon. But if she's going to win this race this year, she's got her work cut out for her. The international field, yet again, so strong. Case in point, Kim Smith joins us here on the set. Kim, thank you so much for coming in today. Hi, thanks for having nice me. Nice to see you. Uh, the memories of last year, so close and finishing second. What are the feelings as you come back now? Yeah, I'm excited to come back and try and go one better this year and um, yeah I'm feeling fit and strong so hopefully it'll be a good race. And as far as the strategy you know I've watched you run many times over the years and it seems like as soon as the gun goes off you hit the front is that something that you work on in practice or is it something you might pull back this year? Yeah I mean I've tried other ways but I feel more comfortable when I'm um, going hard and fast from the start and yeah I think I run the best when I'm doing that so I'm not I'm not I'm gonna see how I feel obviously on Sunday, but um, yeah, I always try and make it a pretty hard and fast race. Now when you're setting up, you know, two weeks, three weeks out, do you start looking at the field and going, this is the, this is the girl that I have to look at, this is the young lady I have to look at, or do you just come in with your game plan and try to execute the game plan as is? Yeah, I mean, you're always looking at the field and seeing who's there, and um, yeah, I think the field is very strong, as the New York Roadrunners always put, brings in a strong field, but um, yeah, I think I, I definitely could feel like I could win, though. Nice. So, you know, last year you had some marathons in your legs and you were training for 26.2 miles. This year you don't have that on the schedule. So no. you're just training for the half and then some spring races this, this spring on the track. What, what's your training been like and do you feel different coming into this race this year? Yeah, I definitely haven't been doing the long runs and um, as long as when I'm training for a marathon and um, focusing more on speed. For the, and doing a lot of track workouts. So it's been fun to do something different and get away from the marathon training, and I'm excited to, to run some shorter races. So we're excited to see Bernard run this weekend, but you have run so well here at the NYRR Fifth Avenue Mile. You know, I mean, you can run fast in the mile, the 5K, the 10K, the half marathon, the marathon. What's your favorite distance? Yeah, this, this would be my favorite distance. I love running half marathons. It's, it's still long enough to be challenging, but you don't... Um, you're not going to wreck yourself too much doing it like a marathon. So I really enjoy the half, So and I feel most confident when I race that. And it's probably fun to think that I've run the fastest half marathon ever <laughs> on American soil. That would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> We've made a big deal this week about running in New York City, starting in Central Park and, and everything that you see as you run. As you're running, do you ever, can you take the time every you know few miles and just kind of look around and, and enjoy the, the landscape? No, no. Not at all. Yeah, no. Tunnel vision for 13.1, yeah. yeah. huh? Pretty much. Okay, shut down powers. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, I mean, it really is at the elite level. I mean, we, we compete all over the world, and, and like she said, you're so focused in trying to accomplish your goal and, and pushing away the pain because you're right on that edge all the time. So when that gun goes off, it's strictly trying to execute your game plan. And, you know, on, on Sunday when it goes off, uh -huh. you're going to see her eyes straight ahead and, and going through the park and trying to get to that 13.1 as fast as she can. So mm -hmm. as we get ready now, uh, this being Saturday, the race in one day, sleep tonight? Trouble sleeping tonight? What's the, what's the game plan the rest of the way? Yeah, I usually don't sleep at all the night before a race. Really? So, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. It seems to work for you. Yeah. Everything works for Kim, yeah. seriously. I mean, this girl knows how to run, and I think if anyone could watch how she trains and races, we would all be better runners. So I'm excited to watch you run on Sunday. Thank you. Well, we sure do thank you for stopping by today, and we, we do wish you the best of luck uh, tomorrow when this race gets started. The international field this year for the New York City Half Marathon, it is something special, but not every runner that runs tomorrow is an international runner. Let's take a look at a local person, Jane Vongvorichodi 
who walked onto the track team at St. John's, and she's been running ever since. Jane, you're getting ready to run the NYC half this weekend, but I got to know a little bit more about you. I mean, you have a great story. You're coming from a professional soccer background, going to run the streets of the NYC half with the elites this weekend, and you've only been running for two years. So fill me in on who you are and how you got here. Um, so I started off as a soccer player. I've been a soccer player for a majority of my life, um, but I always loved running and I always needed to run to be a great soccer player and when I transitioned to running um, no better way to start off than running the New York City half. Um, this will be my third year running it but um, this year I think I have a really good shot at <laughs> doing really well and running fast. So You have now become an elite athlete in the running scene. Tell us about that transition. Um, so I got the opportunity to run in a charity run in a half marathon and when given the opportunity I took that challenge and placed top 10 and uh, two weeks later, you know, I was like, well, I can do better than top 10, and I finished top two, and from there, I was like, well, why not try for the Olympics? I mean, was it a surprise to you that you went from being somebody that had never run 13.1 miles to being one of the best here in New York City? After I started running and um, doing well, I think I just took that by stride and I said, why not? You know, you're a natural athlete and you can do this. And if you set your mind to it, you can definitely do it. And um, I don't think if you, you don't try, you're never going to succeed in anything. So talk about your family coming from Thailand. You have a dual citizenship, you know, having the honor of maybe running for one or the other country, maybe in 2016. I would love to run for the U.S., but running for Thailand would be awesome as well to be wearing um, a country's colors um, and just putting that on would um, you know inspire anybody to just inspire a nation um, that would be my goal. You run for the Central Park Track Club and it was there that the New York Roadrunners found you and said hey do you know that you own five six national records over in Thailand? It was a total surprise to me I was just running to run faster and I was like okay this is a 5k I should run that or a 10k and when I found out I was like really? I have a national record? I was like where are all the other standards? I want to know all the other standards because I want to start breaking them. So you have the Thailand half marathon national record. What is that? Um, that's 118.18. Okay, so what are you hoping to do this weekend? I think 115. Oh, so you're going to crush it again. <laughs> I feel like crushing it. That two, three minutes is good. <laughs> nice. Uh, I don't think the Thailand na national records is you know, the top standards. I think that I can go further and hit some, you know, re you know, maybe even go for some U.S. records or some U.S. Olympic trial records because I'm not locked out of that. So I can give the U.S. runners a run for their money. Well, you're amazing. We can hardly wait to watch you run and it's just gonna be so much fun to watch you in 2016 as well. Yes. And hopefully we'll see the red, white, and blue on you. Yes, in Rio. <laughs> Well, as we kind of like to say around these parts, 15,000 runners, 15,000 stories. But what each of those stories has in common is this race course from Central Park to Times Square to the South Street Seaport. Now that place, that place is something special, Carla. It is indeed. It's one of the most historic areas of New York City. It's really where New York City began, but it was so badly devastated by the storm and they're still trying to recover. It may be where the race ends, but that does not begin to tell the story. We're here in New York City's historic Seaport District with Kevin Draper, the owner of New York Historical Tours. Kevin, why don't you tell us a little bit about where we're standing right now? Well, we're standing right now in the middle of the 12 block area known as the South Street Seaport. And as you can see, we have a major rehabilitation zone mainly from the effects of Hurricane Sandy. The thing with the Seaport is this was pretty much the center of the city back at the time when the Dutch had arrived here. And a lot of these businesses had survived the American Revolution, had survived the Great Fire of 1835, had survived 9-11, but the storm, Sandy, has threatened a lot of these businesses. And you take the half marathon, something like that is very beneficial to the area because you're bringing thousands of people down to the seaport, it's very important, 
for people to realize that it still is a vibrant neighborhood just as it's been for several hundred years. New York Roadrunners and the NYC Half have put together Run the City, a coalition of stores and businesses that are offering discounts to runners and spectators who are coming off of the NYC Half all over the city. So if you want to help be a part of the revitalization of the Seaport District, come on down and check out all of the great businesses that are open here and offering discounts for you. Well, I hope you all would agree. We have seen the stories, we've met the athletes, and now we anticipate the running of the New York City Half Marathon tomorrow. This is where the excitement really, really starts to build. So before we close out the show, and thank you, by the way, for joining us, your final thoughts. Final thoughts? I mean, you have 15,000 runners, and you know, you gotta be excited for everyone. The elite field's awesome. I mean, we have so many runners that could potentially win the race. We have picked our favorites, but I'm just excited for the city and all 15,000 runners that are gonna be out there. I like that. You know, I, I'm excited to see the gun go off and, and to see the finishing faces of everybody. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's so important is that they actually have a fun day out there, and I know they will on Sunday. It's very scary that you are agreeing with him this I half know. hour. Wow. <laughs> what's wrong with me? Carla. I'm really excited for all of the first time runners who yeah. are gonna be out there on Sunday. People like Brian Steinhauer who are tackling their first race or their first half marathon, and what a great place to do it. There is no better place to do this than New York City, the New York City Half Marathon, and it gets going tomorrow. We want you to be a part of the fun, too, so please join us. You can tune in tomorrow, Sunday, March 17th. Then we are back with On the Run uh, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. So that about wraps it up. Two big days of coverage On the Run. We have been with you from first step till the runners cross that finish line. And, and again, I'm going to reiterate this. The thing that I look forward to, we have the elite runners. We have the great runners. We have the guy that jogs next to you on the treadmill in the morning. We have 15,000 <laughs> runners who are, are, are going to take to the streets of New York City. 15,000 runners, 15,000 15, stories. stories. You can tell those stories now after our two days on the run. Please join us tomorrow for the New York City Half Marathon. Until then, have a great night. <laughs>